we set then? Shall I begin this program? Okay, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, this morning's session, Creating a Historic Sites Database. If you have a question, the folks that are streaming while you're here too, so please raise your hand and rose up. We'll come out to you and hand you the microphone. That way everyone gets to hear the question. Sounds easy. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, my name is, is, is John Shear, and I'm the uh, town historian for Clifton Park, Saratoga county new york and i'm going to be introducing the uh, speakers for this session um, creating a historic sites database uh, jean davis bavis. bavis thank you jean bavis uh, is a retired social studies teacher he has served as walworth town historian from 1977 to 1989 and 2004 to the present. He serves as a trustee of the Walworth Historical Society, chair of the Wayne Historians Organization, and co-chair of the Wayne County Bicentennial uh, in 20, uh, for 2023. Jean created the concept for the Wayne County Historic Sites Database several years ago. Our other speaker joining him is Jim Peprocki, and uh, Jim is a member of the Wayne Historians Organization as well as the Rochester Genealogical Society. In October of 2018, he volunteered to take the um, rustic format of Gene's database, which was about 650, 850 sites and create an online database of Wayne County sites that can be edited by authorized historians. Uh, assisting them is uh, Peter Evans, who is the Wayne County historian, and Rosa Fox, who is the uh, town of Huron historian, also in Wayne County. I'm sort of interested in hearing about this because we have sort of done a similar thing in Clifton Park by creating an interactive map of historic sites, markers, and cemeteries. So without further ado, uh, I guess Rosa is going to, uh, uh, to start us off. Well, seeing as how Matt took my thunder away with um, reminding you that if you wish to speak or ask a question, Raise your hand, raise your hand, and I will bring you the microphone. Um, John did a beautiful job with the introduction, and I had prepared an introduction for our presentation here, and John did such a good job, I'm not sure there's much left to say, except that these two guys, Jim and Jean, have done an outstanding job in pulling this historic database together. It's a phenomenal feat that over the course of the last couple of years has really grown. And I think you'll find it, I think you'll be inspired that from in, within their presentation that this is a possibility for all counties within New York State. We hope that you can take away some ideas for your town or county. Um, as I said before, if you have any questions, please raise your hand and I will get out to you with a microphone. Okay, take it away, Jim. Okay. The Wayne Historians Organization is a loose collaboration of town and village historians, members of historical societies, other groups, and anyone who might be interested. This presentation is dedicated to Larry Ann Evans. She died this past December. Larry Ann was the executive director of the Museum of Wayne County History and served as co-chair of the Wayne County Bicentennial Steering Committee. Wayne County is located in upstate New York on the shore of Lake Ontario between the cities of Rochester and Syracuse, not too far from Oswego. Wayne County is a watershed county. 
five towns border the Great Lake Ontario. In the southern part of the county, the Erie Canal runs through six of our towns. In 2013, Gene Bavis had an idea. You all know he's the Walworth historian, co coordinator of WHO, and he can talk about his inspiration. Thank you, Jim. The project began out of two different things of my past experience. I am a retired social studies teacher, as was mentioned. And in 1971, I began a project with another teacher where we took a field trip and we wanted our students to see things along the way, to do what we called reading the landscape. Reading the landscape is a kind of a program that I learned a little bit about by, from Milo Stewart from the New York State Historical Association in a workshop in 1970. And basically it's being a detective and looking at various clues and drawing conclusions. So we trained our students to make those observations and then we required them to do so on this field trip. The other thing that inspired me to start this idea was I saw a presentation by uh, Bill Lesniak called History Along Wayne County Highways, roadside, or Roadside History of Wayne County. He uh, showed a lot of historic markers and some places on the National Register and a bunch of other things that were very interesting. And it got me thinking about my old field trip and thinking about all of the historic sites we have in Wayne County. So in the, at the August 2018 Wayne Historians meeting, someone brought up the idea of some house histories. And I said, well, you know, I've started this database. I have a list here of different things and we could add house histories to that too. And Jim heard that, and I don't think Jim had been familiar with, with the database before that. And he said, hey, I think I could put that online. So by October, Jim had uploaded my spreadsheet, created a template of my Word documents, and made it possible for all of us to work on this database online rather than it being solely on my computer. Technical problems. So by, as I said, by October, we, we had the beginnings of this. Um, we had the good fortune of having Devin Lander, a uh, New York State historian, come and visit Wayne County in November. And we showed him what we had started. And he seemed fairly impressed with the possibilities of our online database. Okay, we're going to go live now. Just bear with me for a minute. So this is the homepage of the Wayne Historians Organization. If we go uh, up to the menu bar and click on the Explore tab, we can search for sites using the search term field here. We can select 
so it's just by town. By category. And subcategory. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can. It's not working. I tried Alt Plus. Okay. Does anybody know how to use Windows here? Control plus does not work. Apparently. Go find Matt. Thank you, that's, Linda. That's good. <laughs> Okay. So let's go back. Okay, we can look at these by town. We can look at them by category and subcategory. So let's take a look at the schools in Marion. There are 14 schools in Marion. We can take a look and see where they are by clicking on the Map It button. If we scroll down on the left sidebar, we can take a tour. And the directions are in the left sidebar here, starting at the Marion Library on Maple Avenue, head northwest, etc. If we click on the Marion Library, You'll see what kind of information we have here. We record a historic site number. The first two digits represent the number of the town. And the last three digits represent the sites sequentially. The type is actually the category. If you hover over the type, you'll see, maybe you'll see if you can read it. B2 is historic markers, E3 is schools and colleges, et cetera. We record the site name, the address, and GPS location. If you click on the GPS coordinates, a map will be brought up showing the location of the library building in Marion. We include a description in the database and images. So this is the current image, well, from 2014. And then in 2021, the historic marker was dedicated. We have an older image, and I guess you're wondering why the Marion Library is in the schoolhouse category. And early on, it was originally the site of the Marion Academy. We have a historic narrative.
Let's take another look at a, a look at another example. Elmira. Social, religious, and political movements. We found eight sites, most of which are associated with- Jim, you need to speak up a little bit. I don't know if you can raise this level. People are having a hard time hearing you. Most of which are associated with the Church of the Latter-day Saints. If we look at the last site here, Angel Moroni Monument, you'll see that we have a note. This is outside the boundaries of Wayne County, but is closely associated with the LDS Church in Palmyra, New York. We have a couple of references, one to the LDS website and one to Wikipedia. In another example, if we go to Walworth, Take a look at fraternal service organizations. We'll find five sites. One of which is the Pacific Hotel, which was formerly a Grange. We have a description here. In the Walworth Historical Society did a series of articles on Main Street. This property is covered in part two. We have a link down here to the Main Street tour. Which brings up a PDF document of the newsletter for the Walworth Historical Society. Oops, what happened? We have two images here, one from 2014 and one from 1907. Okay. So we ne neglected to mention Um, this is a summary of the different types of sites we have. We have quite a few cobblestone structures, over 150 cemeteries, churches, schools, etc. We also have a few watershed moments, which are listed under the political movements. Just a couple of features here in the why is it going? If you hover over the name, the push pin will change color. If you hover over the push pin, It'll list the name of the site. Now these tours that we have are limited by town and category. 
So if we want to create a tour that goes through many towns, we have some can tours. For instance, we have a couple tours for the Erie Canal, part one and two, going from west to east and from east to west. This mouse pad is very touchy. We have a couple of narrated tours. Let's take a look at the Underground Railroad tour, which starts in Sodas Point. Okay. The Underground Railroad mural. And then we'll go up here to uh, Freedom Hill. We click on that push pin. This site talks about Freedom Hill being an important place for the Underground Railroad movement. We have a couple of images, a YouTube video, and a narration. Imagine what was going through the minds of the freedom seekers as they waited at Freedom Hill and saw the schooner free trader awaiting them offshore to take them to camp. Okay, I'm going to excuse me for a minute while I figure out where we are. I'll, while Jim is doing that, do you have any questions at this point? And I will be right there and speak clearly into the mic per Matt's request. Hello, I'm Jason Parkman of the town of Elbridge, and I actually have several questions. <laughs> so firstly, um, what type of database program are you using to organize everything here? We're using MySQL. Is that a good enough answer? It is. It is. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then where is it currently being hosted and maintained? Um, the internet service provider is called iPage. I don't, I don't know where they're located, but you know, out in the ether somewhere, <laughs> cyberspace. Broken up across servers, who knows where, right? Um, what is the current cost and upkeep of maintaining the site and the database? Time. Time? So there's no monetary cost for it and such? The monetary cost is small. Mm -hmm. um, it's about $21 a year for the domain name. Ooh, very nice. Okay. Um, I've got this hooked to my uh, account, and I don't remember what the cost of that is per year, but I've got a number of different uh, websites associated with that. Mm -hmm. So essentially, it's a donation. Now, if you wanted to hook it up to your website, let's say your local historical society or museum had a website, you could create a subdomain on that website and the museum and historical societies uh, would have already paid for those other services. Thank you. And my last question right now is, um, how is the map and the tours generated from the uh, database? How are the maps and the tours? They're generated automatically by Google. So it's a Google map based yes. application. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, to get a little technical, mm -hmm. I'm using PHP, which is a programming language in the, in the, on the server. And there are various interfaces that you can use to access Google Maps and create tours and, and uh, highlight the, the push pins. 
Um, and basically it's uh, using, making use of the GPS coordinates. Excellent, thank you very much. Okay. I don't know, we went through that kind of fast. Uh, I hope I didn't miss anything. So we're gonna take a look at adding a site. How do you do that? Okay. Um, first of all, you have to sign in. Gene, why don't you tell them about the permissions for different people? So the way we have set have this set up is that Jim and I um, have unlimited permissions to um, edit the entire database. And I think maybe there might be one or two others as well. And, but in general terms, the way we've set it up is that, for example, Karen Devlin sitting back there, who is the Marion Town historian, has permission to edit sites in Marion. We have someone who is a church historian who we've given permission to enter uh, to edit all the church related sites in Wayne County. And so in general terms, we can get, grant the permissions for the editing portion of this to individuals um, so that something doesn't inadvertently get messed up or, you know, along those lines. Yeah. Uh, Sure. Rosa, we'll give you the mic so we can hear your qu okay. the question. So we had a question from someone watching online. Is the website set up for the general public? Yes. The uh, WayneHistorians.org can be accessed by anyone, anywhere. When you go to, the, uh, to that website, uh, you hit the Explorer button. And you know, as Jim has demonstrated, you, know, you can explore towns, you can explore uh, topics and subtopics. We have another question from Marjorie. When someone puts something on uh, or fills out the format, the template that you have, do you check it first before it goes live? It just goes live immediately? It goes live immediately. Okay. Uh, we are asking the town historians to monitor the sites, and it's generally, there's not usually more than one or two people in each town Doing that it. are able to, to no, add. No, I just wondered if there was a lag time before it actually. No, it, it goes live immediately upon uh, uploading it, okay. and it also is very easy to edit. So, you know, I put something up there and I said, oops, I spelled that word wrong, and I go back in hit edit, fix it, you know? Right, so if, if someone, um, and actually we'll, we're gonna talk about in, in just a moment, um, we found an error the other day and we fixed it. Rosa, we have another question over here. Right, I'm, I'm Tom LeClaire from Clayton and everything that I'm seeing looks wonderful. One thing that I wanted to find out from your county did you get any pushback from anybody in museums or historical societies saying, well, if we put all this online, nobody's going to come in and visit our organization? So far, we haven't. Um, we think that it helps promote the various organizations and promotes more interest in local history. But I guess that remains to be seen. We're, uh, we're putting up an uh, example of how to add a site. Is that what we're doing next? The more, the, my experience is the more ways you can get people out on the road, on hiking trails that go by historic sites, the interest is raised. I, I teach junior achievement 
in one of our local second grades. And I happen to live on Lake Ontario. And the school is four miles south. So I go in and I ask the kids, how many of you have been up to Lake Ontario? I would say half of them have never gone that four miles. Okay? So when we're doing things like putting on tours, walking tours, riding tours, whatever, every single time that we've been able to get the kids up to a place, wherever it is, and they drag the parents along, there is, it's like, it's like, well, nobody really ever told us this. I didn't know this was so interesting. I hated history. You know, all those types of comments get wiped away. It really does work. You see it happen every day. All right, thank you, Peter. Um, what we're gonna do now is to uh, show you how you can add a new site. Um, notice that Jim is signed in. Uh, it says, welcome Jim Paprocki. And there's, then there's a click up in the upper right-hand corner. You can sign out. Uh, because he is signed in and because he has permission to edit this, this website, um, you're going to take us to Huron, Jim? All right, let's go to Huron and look up schools. And then, then I'm going to tell you that uh, Rose is a slacker. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, th this database is a work in progress. You know, it, it's actually only uh, three years old, and we've been adding things, but, you know, we're busy with other things too. And so, um, so far, uh, and in the original listing, because Huron was on the other side of Wayne County and, and my list didn't contain anything about schools, there weren't any schools listed. Uh, and uh, to date, Rosa has not added a lot of them yet, although she does have them in another location. So today we're going to uh, show you the two that she does have. Uh, notice that on the right-hand side of the screen, uh, Jim is able to edit. And he is also able to add a new site. So he just clicked on that, add a new site. And to save a little time, he um, has a document where he's going to copy and paste to show you um, how we set this site up. He's going to try anyway. You know, it's a little difficult when you're not using your own computer. <laughs> so, all right. So the site name is Brick Schoolhouse District Number Four for the town of Huron. He's going to enter an address and a GPS location. Okay, notice that it says, this is the town of Huron, but it says that this is address is 9204 Rich Road, North Rose, New York. Well, the issue is the postal addresses and the uh, actual towns don't always jive. And besides, Huron doesn't have a post office. <laughs> so it can't be, it, it might, uh, for, for Huron sites, they might be in Sodus, they might be in North Rose, they might even be in Wolcott. So in this case, it's uh, the mailing address would have been North Rose for this site. So then he's going to add a little bit of uh, historical narrative, or description, I'm sorry. And you know, it says it's on the Southwest corner of Ridge and Brick School. House Roads, isn't that interesting? The brick schoolhouse is on the corner of Brick Schoolhouse Road. Road names are fun, you know? And now he's going to add a couple of images. 
And we have uh, two images uh, that he has saved here that he's going to uh, insert, I think. He's going to try to insert. It is actually very easy to do uh, when you're sitting at a computer and you've got images saved on your computer, you just simply upload them and then you can uh, add a caption uh, quite often. Um, in this case, oops. Okay. Well, if it's not right, we can fix it later. It's like I said, it's real easy to edit once you get it up there. So he's also added some historical narrative. And it looks like he's adding a reference now. The reference goes in the right side. In the left side, he can say what he wants to call it. And he's going to call it here on schoolhouses. And that reference app happens to be to Rosa's um, website for the town of Huron. So there we are. We you, you screwed up the labels, huh? Okay. All right. Well, um, you get the idea. And like I said, it's pretty easy to correct. We have a question. Uh, yeah, I'm Deirdre Sinnott. I'm not one of the historians. I'm an author. Um, I just wondered, you've got a fairly extensive template set up there with a bunch of different layers for your database. And I just wondered if you had a template that you could share with others so that if they you know, are able to make it easier and more streamlined. We actually do. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that more. And, and uh, if we don't answer your question, come back to us, OK? So now he has hit save, and we have the new site created. He actually fixed it, isn't he? How about that? All right, where are we going now, Jim? Our connection. <laughs> like I said, it, when you're not using your own computer, um, it makes it a little more difficult sometimes. Now we're back to the search in Huron for schools. And now we have three of them. So we're adding another one real quick. I'm gonna try to do it real quick. Yeah, it probably would be. All right, we're adding a, another uh, site uh, for the resort schoolhouse. District number five. 
And once we get the GPS and address, let's just put the GPS in. We won't need to address for right now, do we? All right. And we're not going to bother with a picture on this one. We'll just, um, what we want to show you is the uh, the mapping process and how it now can do the tour. So now we have four found. We can map it. We can take the tour. So answer Marjorie's question. Do these sites go up automatically? Okay. Now to answer this gentleman's question, GPS location, Google hands it, handles it. It's all dynamic. Okay. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing. How do you know where these schoolhouses are? I like to use Beer's map from 1874. I think there's one for each county. And they're online at digitalcollectionsnypl.org at the New York Public Library. And actually, you know, I also have a physical copy of that and I've I've used it to, to locate different things, so it's it's very handy. Um, so this is the town of Huron. You'll see in district number nine, right over here, there's an SH and, and a little box. I can zoom in some more. And there's an SH and a little uh, house there with, within a parcel. That's the schoolhouse in Lumsville, wherever that is, I like to take the Beers map and reference it to a current day map. And you can use Google map online to figure out what these streets are, the names of the streets. And you can also use a control click on Google maps to access something called what's here. What's here gives you the GPS location, or you can copy the GPS location with a control click on a Google map. Instead of typing it in, I like to copy and paste. There's less, less chance to, of error that way. Yeah, I know, but I wanted to. Are there any, any other questions about? Uh, okay, we got a couple, a couple of live questions here. How do you acknowledge into the database the source of information, especially for pictures and having secured the copyright permission if? Uh, for them and so on. In general terms, uh, when you put a picture, you there's a space for the description. And, you know, for example, a lot of the pictures in, in the database I've taken. So I just say, you know, photo by Bavis in 2019 or whatever. Uh, and that's where you would, you know, say the photo was attributed to so and so. And if you want to say used by permission, you can do that. I don't usually do that, but um, it can be done that way. And what was the other part of the question? Okay, all right. Margie? Uh, 
I realize that it's town by town. Is there any way of, say, doing a cobblestone tour that would include more than just, or a, you know, you, you, did, you did a special one for the Underground Railroad. We, we could do a cobblestone tour of each town right. easily. Um, I don't think we can do a countywide one unless we do it as a can tour. Okay. Um, that's, that's correct. To go back to the uh, first gentleman's question here, under the, the caption for the image, um, you can add credits there. With regard to tours, they're limited by Google. You can only do, I believe, 25 uh, GPS locations, or in this case, 25 sites uh, in a tour. So we can create a canned tour, as Gene said, for cobblestone houses that cross town boundaries. So if you wanted to do a tour of uh, cobblestone houses um, that are essentially along the lake, going through Sotus, Williamson, and Ontario, you could do that. Um, but, but if you had wanted to do a tour of more than 25 cobblestones, you would have to set up um, diff one, different, different parts, you know, A, B, C, or part one, two, and three. It, it's really just to follow up. My name's Linda Brown. I'm a Masson town historian, and these gentlemen have made this site so easy for us as historians to use. Um, but I wanted to, most of the searches you've done, Jim, were based on towns. You can also do the search on, say, cobblestones, and it will give you every single one. Yeah, so if correct. you're interested in that particular list to create your, for whatever reason, yeah, your yeah, own you thing, can, you can, you can uh, search without, you can search all towns for all of the um, cobblestone houses, for all of the uh, uh, historic markers, for example. Uh, or you can search by town and topic. So uh, there are a lot of options here uh, to find things. If you just want a list of like other stones in the county, put it that, and you get the whole list of other things. Yeah. All right. Um, in fact, uh, Jim just did that. Uh, 209 cobblestone sites in, in Wayne County. And notice, scroll down a little bit there, Jim. Uh, notice that some of them say gone. Um, these are, we know there was a cobblestone structure there, but it got torn down and whatever. And we, we want to include historic sites that have been altered. Um, one time there might have been something significant there. And, and let me just say that we call this historic sites. Not everything on here is what a lot of people consider historic. They are things of interest. And you don't, you don't have to be a famous, uh, a famous building or, or a perfect example of something to be included. Uh, whatever is whatever's included is what we feel we want to include. So, question over there. Hi, I'm Moira Marshall, town of Stratford historian. I just had a question. I saw that you used uh, Google Street View of some of the houses. And my question is, do you go to the people that own the houses and ask for permission to put their, their house up? Or you know, what kind of approval process, if there is any? Or the disclaimer, the homepage. Uh, no, we don't. Uh, and All right, well, the, the way we look at it is, if you're driving down the road, anything you see on either side of you along the road is public domain. You know, there may be somebody who will be upset that I took a picture of their house, but I have the right to do that. You know, unless they want to put up a big wall or whatever in front of it.
All right. Uh, notice. Yeah. And um, Peter, they can't hear you when you're talking without a microphone. Um, notice that we say uh, in the second paragraph here, um, local historians have selected sites for this project for based on a variety of criteria. Uh, local interest, not necessarily rigid historical standards. The goal of the Wayne County Historic Sites Project is to provide accurate information about each site. We realize that uh, mistakes occur and we may not have as much information as some would like. We encourage you to contact us if you have more or if you notice errors. But in the first paragraph, it says, most sites are on private property and therefore are not open to the public. Okay, if you wish to view the sites on private property, you must do so from public streets only. Only the owner of record may authorize you to enter private property. Please respect private property owner rights. And we feel very strongly that, you know, we wanna share the history and if somebody who's grumpy happens to live in a historic home, too bad, we're gonna tell people this was a historic home. Uh, we won't invade their privacy other than perhaps showing a picture of their home. So and I guess it's better to uh, ask forgiveness than permission sometimes. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, John Shear, I'm down a Clifton Park historian. <clears throat> and we have done something very similar on a smaller and less sophisticated scale. Um, and uh, it's available uh, on, a, on the town's website, cliftonpark.org, under the Historic Preservation Commission. And uh, as I say, it's less sophisticated, but it's very similar to what you're doing. And we have historical views as well as present day views of these historic buildings. We also have the historic markers and the cemeteries on. And what's really nice for me as town historian is all I have to do is provide the material. Somebody else with the technology experience and know-how actually you know, creates this database using my material, but my material is critical to to this going up so you don't necessarily have to know how to do it you know, just find someone who does yeah I, I tell people i know just enough about technology to be dangerous jim is our techie guru here and he's created this it's pretty easy for me just to uh, copy and paste information like you saw jim do earlier um Yeah, and we do too. And and actually, um, did we have another question, Rosa? Okay, let's do the other question, then we'll move on. Karen, um, I just Karen Devlin, Town of Marion historian. I just want to comment that we do not list the current owner's name or any information like that about them. This is strictly about who lived there before they did. Right, and, and you know, and, and if you're going to start doing that, well, but of course, even that's public record. You know, owner's names is public record. So I don't think you have to worry about that, but um, you know, there's no need in general to do it. Um, we've been using, um, as you see on the screen here, um, the Wayne County Bicentennial has created a Facebook page that we are doing daily postings of historical things. And we often reference our historic sites database. For example, the other day, uh, we, we used to have a coal trestle, which brought uh, coal from Pennsylvania and loaded it onto ships at Soda's Point. And the coal trestle uh, burned in 1971, I believe. Yes, burned down in 1971, it says so right there. And <laughs> Uh, so there is a, um, it's not a historic marker, but there's a, an interpretive panel on the site of where that coal trestle used to be. 
And so the other day, because we want to generate interest in local history, we posted about this coal trestle having been there and the fact that you can learn more about the coal trestle by reading the interpretive sign and or visiting our historic sites database. And when you click on that um, link, um, you, could, you go to the historic sites database. Now, we got, you know, I mentioned earlier, we said to people, if you find an error, please let us know. Well, Dave found an error. He said, I don't think it's 12,000. I think it's more like 1,200, probably a typo. So I get the email because I'm one of the contact people. I thanked him for sending the message. I forwarded the message to Bruce Farrington, former Soda's Point historian, and Tom Lightfoot, current um, Soda's Point historian. And both of them said, yep, you're right. It was an error. We fixed it. So it works. Um, there's probably other errors there that somebody hasn't caught yet, but we do our best to try to verify as much information as we can. And wherever possible, we try to add references so that people can. Perfect. Before you do move, you'll never get anything done. So it's better to correct than do nothing. The, the, other, the other piece of this is there's a lot more information about the sites that we have. It's not all complete, but we figure a little something is better than nothing. We can always add more later. And there's, we have about 1,200 sites or so, give or take. We probably could have 10,000 sites. We haven't got there yet. We keep adding new stuff as we find it that we think would be interesting to people. Yeah, you could at least have eight new schoolhouses or eight more schoolhouses, right? Yeah, yeah. Once once Rosa gets busy and <laughs> okay, here's another little thing that happened, and this was kind of in the description of what we were doing today um, during the pandemic when the pandemic first hit and all the schools closed down. Um, most factories and businesses closed down and parents are sitting home with their kids going nuts. So I posted on Facebook one day, hey folks, we have a historic sites database in Wayne County. Why don't you find it online, look up some sites and take your kids for a ride. Show them some historic sites. It's safe because you're in your car. You don't need to get out of your car to see these sites. And so this family, a husband, wife, four kids, got in their car. They drove to every town in Wayne County, 15 towns, and found I don't know how many different sites. They posted it on Facebook. And within a day, they had three or 400 likes and com tons of comments. And I know of at least a couple other families that did the same thing. And then someone said, hey, we ought to have a scavenger hunt. Uh, yeah, we should. Let's not call it a scavenger hunt. We call it the Wayne County New York Challenge. And we haven't really developed it completely yet, but our goal is to use the database to encourage families to go find historic sites, look at things, learn a little bit about your county's history. You know, we have over 100 historic markers. Just finding all of those would be quite an education. Uh, go look at some of these cobblestone houses. They're really cool. Go find where the old schoolhouses used to be in your town or area of your, your uh, community. Lots of fun stuff to do. And going back to my seventh grade field trip experience, most of my former students who did this are now in their 50s and 60s. Yeah, I'm older than dirt. And, but they're only 10 years younger than I am. Anyway, um, 
I would say that when I run into former students, that 90% of them remember that field trip. And a good portion of those kids say, hey, I still look for cobblestone houses or Greek revival style houses or this architecture stuff you taught us way back when. So seeing historic sites, engaging with historic sites, even if it's just stopping in front of it and looking at it, will get people interested. And I think our historic sites database does a lot to help people engage that way. That picture there is a no-no. No. You got kids' faces. But Gene went to extra length to get permission from that family to post that picture. I mean, we, we do take these things seriously. And we didn't want to, you know, break any traditions or laws or, or anything along those lines. Yes, I, I did ask permission to use their picture. And they graciously granted it. OK. We got about 15, 10, 15 minutes, I believe. Uh, we created a mock-up to answer somebody's question, previous question, uh, with a template for both for Region 11. We were going to do a presentation to uh, at their conference a couple of years ago, but unfortunately, it was canceled. So we have um, two mock-ups created. Uh, okay. I know you can't see that, and I can't not going to be able to figure out how to. Yeah, maybe I can. Ooh, Zoom in. You're a fast too, too much. Okay, we have one for Ontario County. Um, if we take a look at the uh, all the towns, we don't have too much in here. Only twenty one sites. One thing we didn't mention is each town has a base site, which essentially is government, your government offices, uh, named site 01-0002-000. So that's the starting point. For Monroe County, for Monroe County, Before you leave, if you want to get on our mailing list, leave your name and an email, and we'll send you some of the supporting, if you want it, some of the supporting information. But the sign up sheets are up here. Sign up sheets. Okay. For, um, for Monroe County, we have the list of towns, and uh, there happens to be one city uh, in Monroe County. And we have a few sites here, many of which are the Greece schoolhouses, because we wanted to show how we could map those as well. So the Rochester Genealogical Society had a picnic a year or two ago at the Greece Historical Society and Museum. And one of their displays was a beers map, which with actual push pins and strings in it that showed the Greece district schoolhouses. So I just took that information and added it here. And there are the uh, schoolhouses. There might be more over on to the left side of the screen. And whoops, it, yeah. anyway, we can take a tour um, of that as well. But one thing I want to show you here is that you can play. We set this up so you could play in our sandbox. 
so if you go to this site, monroe.rcip.info, and sign in using a username, guest. Yeah, you're, you're never going to guess the password. Guest. <laughs> So um, I'll have Jim go back to that, what the URLs for that are in a minute, so you can copy them down, or we'll be happy to send them to you as well if you contact us, um, contact at waynehistorians.org. So now, now you'll see that the guest is signed in, and we'll go to all the sites. Scroll down, maybe. I can't use. There we go, and you'll see the edit button now over on the right hand side. So you can edit any of those sites, and you can create a new site. And that's all I have. All right, so let's take some more questions. Uh, I'd like to recognize one person, Marge Perez. Raise your hand, Marge. Marge was 30 years county historian before me. And a lot of the roots of what we've heard today started with her. Um, another thing I'd like to say is probably, I don't even know the history, but probably started with her was this Wayne Historians Organization. And when I took over in 2004, it was made up of all the historians and representatives from every historical society. Well, pretty soon, other people had an interest. And today, anybody in this room who wants to come and join us is welcome. And we, now that's an exaggeration, but still, <laughs> Well, you know, you're not going to drive down. Yeah, yeah, you are welcome. But, but the point is, we have people from the Rochester area, from the libraries, from um, the genealogical societies, you, you name it. If you have an interest in research and history, you're, you're welcome. Um, it is informal. There's no, no constitution, no bylaws. And no, no, no treasury. We don't have any money. Um, usually, if there's something that needs money, I pay it out of my budget. But that's rare, almost very rare. So um, we meet six times a year. Well, no, with COVID, everything's out the window. But we met, meet six times a year at noon on varying different days throughout, you know, every other month uh, at one of our historic locations. Okay. And so, you know, everybody is uh, participating. We usually have 25 to 30 people. It changes uh, all the time. Linda, for instance, in the back, she's a teacher. She doesn't make all the meetings. You know, I mean, that's just the reality. Thank you, Peter. During, during COVID, we did this by Zoom. And, yeah. And occasionally we do a Zoom meeting, so. Zoom has been. Who has a question way. that you I, want I to ask us? I have a comment before I run back to anybody with a question. Some of you have picked up these wonderful little Apple pads. There are still, there are four left. So on your way out, make sure you grab one if you're up here in time. Tell to them what it is, Rosa. It's an apple pad. It, it's, it's, a pa it's, a ha it's a slice of apple that when you take it out and unfold it, like, it turns into an apple. And like a little pad little that you can write paper. on. And then we have some regular pads. And there's all kinds of Wayne County tourism material. Um, our historic sites brochure from Peter's office and our Wayne County Bicentennial brochure. The pads, I'm gonna go back to Christine Worth. She is our tourism director for Wayne County. 
she threw these in and the other pads. So I'm going to tell her you guys really like these little things. So right. and, any questions? And yes. you can reach us by way of the addresses on those uh, Wayne County Bicentennial sheets. Yes, um, and, and there are brochures. also sheets on the table up front with pens if you want to leave your email address for us, if you could sign those. Yes, please, your way out. if you're interested at all in hearing from us, please uh, please put your name and email address up there. So. Can you make copies of your slides available for those of us who were trying to make notes fast and couldn't go quick enough? Uh, we actually have the presentation up on Google Drive. If you leave your email with us, we can share it with you. Yes, uh, and if you want to play in the sandbox that, that he was talking about, for either Ontario or Monroe County. Just Monroe? Okay, Ontario, you can't play in the sandbox, but Monroe, Monroe you can. So sign into that Monroe uh, URL there, and um, then you can just experiment a little bit with the, the whole thing. Who else? I think they're hungry. We are uh, obviously out of time, and uh, we really appreciate you all coming out and Hopefully we've inspired you and we are willing to share the basic template with you. Uh, so, you know, feel free to uh, contact us and uh, thanks again.